wondered if you could just uh, give me your perspective on uh, what it means to you and the significance to you to be fighting at home for the first time after having your last several fights and making a very big name for you around the world and in America uh, in your last three fights with Wilder, but now going home finally. And not only going home, but doing so in not just any old event, but as has been discussed, you know, what will probably break the record for the biggest attendance in the history of British boxing. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, uh, Dan. You know, I've been on the road since 2018. Um, I've been in some tough fights around the world, and it's finally good to come back to break all records on UK soil in such a, such a long time. Um, to be fighting at the National Stadium in, in Wembley, London. Uh, it just shows you how much the fans support me. And, and um, I'm overwhelmed, like I said earlier, I'm overwhelmed with the support that I've been showing the last, since the comeback, really, since the second career. It's been absolutely fantastic. And I just want to say a massive thank you to every person who bought a ticket who made this event possible because not only me and the promoters and the, the opponents made this event happen, without the fans, then there would be no event. That's a fact. So we owe a massive thank you to everybody who spent their hard-earned money on a ticket and we're going to entertain like uh, nothing we've ever seen before. So I'll ask you this, Tyson. Are you, uh, first of all, you know, you're not going to be facing Deontay Wilder for the first time in a while. So that's got to be... Uh, a, a change of pace for you if you could discuss yeah. finally facing somebody different but also how how surprised are you that there was i mean i knew there'd be a big crowd but are you a little bit surprised that it's that big that they that they have welcomed you with this much open arms and it's become this big of an event and not just you know a good solid big time heavyweight title fight but the biggest of all time yeah i'm, I'm not surprised because i, I knew how um how much support I've been getting over social media and, and fan mail and stuff. Um, I knew how much people have appreciated the, the comeback and the mental health um, return and all that. So I wasn't surprised, but to sell Wembley out in one in like a few hours, that was uh, it was crazy to me. And it was a uh, really happy times for me and my family. Not not only because of the uh, the fight that got made with me and Dylan uh, and all pretty showdown, but like I say, for all these people to to show the love that I've been showing in this uh, in this massive event is absolutely fantastic and to be home back in back in england at the capital city wembley um it, it's fantastic i can't i can't really say much more than it's i'm overwhelmed and it's absolutely fantastic to be a part of this massive event it's going to be a great uh, a great night of boxing on a real real show as we always do thank you dan up next uh jeremy harridges jeremy go ahead Tyson, um, thank you for taking the time. I know that you've talked about the possibility of retirement. Some people within your circle have said that's not true. Where are you in, in your mind with the idea of retirement at this moment? Well, to be honest with you, I'm only thinking about Dylan White at this moment. I'm not thinking about retirement. Um, that'll all come after I've had a fight. You know, we'll think about what's going to happen and what the future holds for me. Uh, at the minute, I've got a massive task in Dylan. A lot of people are, are underestimating Dillian White, but not me. Um, I give the guy all the respect he's deserved throughout the training camp. I've been training since January. I've been breaking all records in the gym. I've been feeling good, looking good. Um, so, yeah, I've not underestimated this guy. I've given him, I've given him the respect that I did Deontay Wilder and everybody else. So, um, I really, really have trained well and I'm prepared very good for this fight. So, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You, before the fight with Deontay Wilder, it's, you certainly had your words with each other, but you always said he was the second best heavyweight to you. Where yeah. do you think Dillian White falls in line there? I think Dillian's definitely a top five heavyweight, for sure. Um, he's definitely in the top five heavyweights. He's, he's the number one ranked WBC contender. Um, like everybody knows, he's been the mandatory challenger for like 147 years. Um, so yeah, he, he deserves his shot. He's getting his shot at the title, and, and that's it. You know, there's not much more we can say. Dylan's definitely a top five heavyweight, and if he beats me, he'll be ranked number one. So all to play for. So I was just wondering, obviously, throughout your career, we've seen you boxing various ways, whether it be orthodox, southpaw, on the back foot, coming forwards, getting rough, getting involved. To counteract what you feel Dillian's best at, how do you feel you'll approach the fight to be successful against him? We'll make that decision as soon as the first bell goes. So it's up to Dylan, really. Whatever he wants to do, then we'll accommodate him. Because that's what good champions do. We um, we adapt to the situation, the environment that we're in. 
Dyson, I'm also just one more. I'm just also interested to know, you know, throughout your career, you've been used to kind of, especially recently, those big fight build-ups where you've had interactions with your opponent. Granted, in the third Wilder fight, Deontay wasn't as forthcoming as what maybe people would have thought. Do you feel like you've had... Yeah, does it feel like it's as big a fight to you that going in with Dillian as what it could be if he had been more involved in the build-up, if he had maybe turned up to the announcement press conference and what have you? Um, I don't think it uh, really matters, to be honest, because if the fighters speak a lot or they don't. It doesn't really matter when they get in the ring. Uh, after that first bell goes, it doesn't matter what he said, what I said. It's all down to the fist from the game plans and who does what on the night. So whether, whether the opponent wants to talk a lot or they don't I know it's a big fight we sold 94,000 tickets so uh, we'll, uh, we're definitely going to put a show on and I'm looking forward to a massive uh, massive night of boxing Andy thank you. thank you up next Danny Flexen Danny hey Tyson how you doing how you doing big Dan I'm good mate I'm good um why do you think Dillian's now changed his mind about participating in the pre-fight media stuff? Why do you think now's the time that he's decided to get involved? Um, I think it's fight week and um, everyone's excited. He's done his training. He's, he took himself away in Portugal for the full fight camp. Um, he lives over there. So he's been just keeping himself to himself and he's been doing his training, focusing on that. So now the training must be finished. He's, um, he's interacting into the fight week and, and doing his bit playing the part we all have a part to play does any part of you miss the kind of back and forth that you get at a traditional press conference between the two of you 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 often get the better of fighters in that context um, not really because it was only announcement press conference it wasn't the actual press conference for the fight mm. uh, I'm sure that the, the fight week press conference they'll uh, will be talking to each other then you know the, the first initial press conference wasn't really uh, the big thing it was months away from the, the fight and, and both fighters had to go into training camps for the whole time uh, so it didn't really mean much to be fair anyway but it, it was what it was i i thought I, I handled it pretty good myself on my own single-handedly sold out wembley stadium on me uh didn't do a bad job to be fair when you look at how your career's unfolded and obviously still unfolding now um how yeah. proud are you you know you go from the undercard of a man who boxed at that stadium to breaking records at that stadium for the World Heavyweight Championship? It's been a fantastic journey, you know. Um, it's been a long, hard road, and, and the Lord knows it has been. It's been tough. It's been a lot of left and right turns. And and I'm just, I'm so happy that the way it's all gone. I've had a great career. Um, I've been I've been in England. I've been, I've been every different champion there is to be, every single world champion there is to be. I've boxed at MGM, T-Mobiles, Naples Centre, Madison Square Garden. The MEN Arena, and now I'm boxing at Wembley Stadium. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. I think it's been an absolutely fantastic career. 13 going on 14 years career. Stayed unbeat throughout my campaign. Boxed the, you know, the most difficult fighters of my day. And uh, and I've just keep going, don't I? Just keep going. Just keep rolling on. When that bell rings in your mind, tell us what you're visualising you do to Dillian White. I don't really visualise anything. You know, a lot of fighters, they have tunnel vision and they envisage themselves winning fights or whatever. I just take it all in. I enjoy the moment because, you know, I'm obsessed with time and I'm obsessed even more with moments in time. And as human beings, we only have a certain amount of moments in time. And these are my moments in time. And I got to take every second as a blessing because that's what it is. I've been blessed abundantly to be at this stage in my career and be in this position in my life um and it's all, all time that you can never get back once it's past you never reverse that clock back so we enjoy it a lot of people look forward to what they're going to do after the fight they're going to go out they're going to go on holiday spend time with family but not me i like to enjoy every second i'm in that ring and for me it goes very quick even if it's a 12 round fight it goes like two minutes um i wish that we could do a fight for like a full day long like a full day of fighting that would be more my style and just enjoy it just enjoy getting punched and punching someone in the face um it's absolutely <laughs> fantastic and for people who know what i'm talking about they'll understand what i'm talking about but from the average person looking in the thing that's something a lunatic would say but you know i really enjoy it all i enjoy the fight game or else i still wouldn't be in it after all these years 
I really do love it, and it's probably the only time I'm actually truly happy. I'm really happy when I'm in the boxing ring getting thumped in the face, and, and, and you know, I have to climb off the canvas or a big dramatic finish or a big dramatic something's happened in the fight. It's, it's, all, it's all very entertaining for me in my life, and I really look forward to it all. Tyson, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. I mean, you finally get to prepare with Sugar for someone other than Deontay Wilder. I know he's been excited about preparing for somebody new and getting you ready and then having a training camp, too, uh, there in the UK as opposed to Vegas. Yeah, for sure. Sugar's, uh, Sugar's uh, really enjoying himself. He's had a fantastic time in this camp. He's in great shape. He's doing 100 press-ups a day. <laughs> he really is enjoying it. We are enjoying it. You know, we are the dynamic duo. People know that. And our training camps are not grueling. They're not like doom and gloom. We're having laughs, we're dancing in the gym, we're singing songs, we're training in underwear. It's fantastic. You know, I don't think there's ever been a boxing duo like me and him who have more fun while in a serious training camp than every championship of the world or any championship of the world. We really do enjoy ourselves. It shouldn't be doom and gloom. Like I say, you should enjoy your job to the utmost. Um, and we really do. We really do enjoy ourselves and we enjoy every moment because we know we're very blessed and lucky to to be having this moment in time. And today is our, our time. So we enjoy it. What if White was sitting right across from you right now? You were standing face to face. Give us a little, what would you say to him? You know, you never know what you're going to say or react to somebody until you're in front of them. People talk a lot of uh, stuff, good game. But when you're in front of a man, you're looking in his eyes, and he could do anything to you at that moment. You really don't know what you do until you face with that situation. Um, so I could just say, I'd, I'd um, say this and say that, but in hindsight, I wouldn't really know when, until I was there in front of Dylan White. And that's going to be this week or next week, rather. So we'll find out. And your last uh, few fights have been here in Vegas, and uh, has your training regimen changed a little bit? Because we know before you would train some there, then you would come and, and train some here. Uh, tell yeah. us what, what that's been like the last you know six or eight weeks. It's good. We always like to do different training methods. We've been playing a lot of golf for this this fight. We've been doing a lot of air driving the greens up on the golf course here in Lancashire, in on in Morecambe Bay. And I think that's really improved the right hand and I put the shoulder into the shot, really driving it through, driving that ball like 400 yards. Um, it really does help. And we've been doing a lot of that. We practice a lot. We maybe do maybe shoot 150 to 200 balls a day as part of training. So we always do something a little bit different in every different camp. Um, yeah. Thank you, TC. Uh, up next is Matt from Into Boxing. Matt? Hi, Tyson. Thanks for giving us some of your time. Hi, Matt. Are you into boxing? <laughs> <laughs> definitely am, but I definitely am. Um, I wanted to ask you, this is the first fight where you'll have your dad present there in the arena. Um, how how pleasing is that for you? Obviously, because you've had them trips away to Vegas and he's not been able yeah. to be there. How how pleasing is it to have him there with you? Yeah, it's good that my dad can come to the fights. and I think my dad may be on the undercard as a... Uh, Starting so we, 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 he, he might be too drunk to see the fight by the time he gets it. His first victory since the 90s. <laughs> so he, uh, he might be absolutely blinded by the time it comes around. But yeah, it's good to have my dad there, obviously. My dad's done the full camp with me this time. He's been in camp with me the whole time, watching over things and taking a few heart attacks in camp and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been good. With it. Overall, we've had a good, uh, really good training camp, and I'm sure he's enjoyed it. Uh, to be a part of it, where he's been a lot away for such a long time, out of the training camp. I think the last camp he was at was in 2018, when I boxed last year in the UK. So it's been a while since he's been to a training camp, because I've had all the, the rest of the fights in, in America lately. So it's been good to have me down here. He's been a good asset for the camp, and he's kept everyone on the straight and narrow. 